The scripture for today's message is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, but for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in s o l Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Shalom Choir and Yisra Kisra will glorify God with their praise. I hope you have a joyful time during the Christmas season. We, you saw the decoration of uh, in the, uh, our residence. People who are offering services in, in our basement, uh, they may, I saw them taking pictures in the garden. We turn on the lights. So people are taking pictures of them. We have only one week left before Christmas. I hope you are filled with joy and happiness in this season. And we did, we did our Christmas decorations on a small scale, but we used to do, do it on a big scale. We couldn't do the Christmas lighting as well, but we hope to do a greater, have them on a greater scale. Let me begin. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is the third week of December. We have only about a dozen days left. In the In the year's, year end season, we reflect on the year. We think about how many of our resolutions have been kept, what bad habits we have to fix, what plans to, what plans to have for the new year, and how we can make ourselves better. By the way, as we look back on ourselves, what commonly goes through our mind is that time flies so fast. Most of all, this year, the pandemic tormenting the entire world made us feel whether lethargic. With reduced outdoor activities, our life has been simplified, which makes us feel like time has gone by more quickly than any other year. With this rapid passing of time, can you proudly confess that you've spent this year without regrets? If, you, if you've successfully fulfilled your plans and you made at the start of the year and become recognized by your diligent work, you would feel proud of and satisfied with how you've spent this year. By the way, even if we've lived our life with zeal in a fleshly sense, we have to examine how we've lived for our spirit, our master, how much we've changed ourselves, how much we've sown and worked faithfully for our true home, where we will return. I urge you to make a resolve to change yourself for the better spiritually and physically in the new year. Then, what should we do to live a truly blessed life without regrets? Today's passage advises us to be careful how we walk as wise men. Based on the passage, let us explore how we can become pleasing to and commendable before Father God. First, we should make the most of our time. Today's passage says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the, because the days are evil. Unwise and stupid ones indulge in eating and drinking and in worldly pleasures as if this life on earth was everything. Without hope for the afterlife, they live so, thinking that the life in this world is everything and all things are done once they die. But wise ones recognize where they are originally from and where they are headed. Understanding the providence of God the Creator who created man and prepared heaven, they know well how they should live their life on this earth. 
knowing that if they live in sin, then you will for following their fleshly desires and former ways of life. They would end up in terrifying punishment of hell and death in the afterlife. They don't indulge in worldly pleasures. Those who know the true value in life and have a clear goal are wise ones. To become such wise ones, we need to believe in God the Creator and the existence of heaven and hell. As we do so, we know, the, we know the whole duty of man and lead an upright life. Thus, we don't live for worldly pleasures of eating, drinking, and enjoying ourselves. But while we profess to believe in God and confess that heaven and hell are real, if we still love and befriend the world, this proves that we lack true faith. Also, to become wise ones making the most of our time, we need to recognize that the time we are living in is the end time when God is finishing off the human cultivation. Namely, the Lord's coming is just around the corner. If we believe this from the depth of our heart, we know how we should live. As for patients who are As for patients who are aware that people who have only limited amount of time left until their death, they receive death sentence from the doctor. As for those patients, they don't know that they are nearing death. How would they spend their remaining days? Rather than wasting their time on hating others, quarreling, they try to wrap up their life elegantly. They try to do good by forgiving those whom they've hated and broken peace with. They say, they say to them, thank you to people whom, to whom they are grateful and donating to some good work. Even those who don't believe in the afterlife become solemn before death. But we know about heaven and hell, different dwelling places in heaven, and we were in our everlasting home. In heaven, it's no use saying, my rewards are little. I want to work faithfully from now. Give me a chance. The dwelling places and rewards given according to our spiritual change, sowing and faithfulness won't change ever. If we truly believe this, how should we conduct ourselves? What should we live for? What should we live for? The Bible says, Therefore, be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at the what time of the nighttime thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed this house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think He will. Another verse also warns us, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and of sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Then what should we do to be on the alert and of sober spirit? Even though Noah eagerly proclaimed the judgment of water, people who didn't believe him lived in debauchery and indulged in eating and drinking were all destroyed. Noah didn't know the exact date or hour of the judgment, but he clearly recognized that it was near. By preparing the ark, he was saved. We should also live a, live a life set apart from it. While Noah was building the ark, you know, many people must have wondered, why is he making such a big ark? Why? What in the world is he doing? They must have wondered. They, they could have asked, Noah, what are you doing? Noah could have said, the judgment is near, so you have to repent of eating it, having lived in sins. Noah must have shared, shared and how would people have responded to Noah's message? They didn't obey what Noah said. They could have mocked him. They could have said he must have gone. But Noah believed in the Almighty God, trusted him, and 
because he trusted in his covenant, even though he was misunderstood by the people, he still built the ark and in the end he was saved. The same goes for our spiritual life. People, people out in the world don't understand those who live a good Christian life. They don't understand why we are offering Uh, give offerings to God. They also say, why pe- Christians are make, uh, building big sanctuaries? It's better for them to help the needy, just as Jesus did. They have such misunderstandings against the Christians. Then, should we follow them? Even though we are misunderstood by the world, we have to stay firm on our faith and we have to look to God the Father alone and we have to set our standard in the Word and we shouldn't waver. Even though we are misunderstood, we, once we've chosen the truth, we shouldn't miss it. That way we can be saved just as Noah was. While living in this world, once we turn our eyes and attention, even just a little, we see, we see so many things that could take away our time and heart. Unless we guard our heart, we may easily love and get drenched in the world. Much of what we see in TV dramas glorifies fleshly love. Once we have our heart taken away by it, we yearn for fleshly love. Some church members, some church members said that she got into comedy shows or programs that provide information on nurturing kids. which are relatively less secular, which were, but at some point she found herself spending much of her time watching them. Fleshly is like, fleshly, flesh is like a swamp that draws us deeper and deeper into it. Once we take in fleshly things, we lose interest in spiritual matters and the truth isn't put in our hearts. With idle thoughts, we cannot worship God in spirit and truth. We find it demanding to pray. We cannot pray well. Having fleshly things contained in our heart and mind, we have no room to put in spiritual things. Therefore, we have, to be, we have to be careful not to have our eyes, ears, heart, and mind taken away by the world. These days, just through our cell phones, we can share information in the world, not to mention the news of the world. We even know who went abroad. We know who bought this and that. We have all information. But there are people who use cell phones only in sending and giving text, texts, and they don't take in worldly things. Others can watch pornography on their phones. There are people who... There are many secular things that try to come into our heart through cell phones and TVs. You may think it's not a sin, but if you begin to accept them, you will be consumed by those contents. So, in order for us to make, a, make the most of our time, we shouldn't have our hearts taken away by those things. Once you, if, if you do so, you, I mean, you begin to lose interest in spiritual things. On the Sabbath, You know, when you wake up on Sunday, I know that you don't watch TV for secular content except at GCN. And let's say you watch secular content and then what, turn your channel to GCN to worship, or attend worship, then you cannot concentrate yourself. If you fill your hearts with the secular content, even while you attend worship, even while you are, you are awake, you cannot engrave the words on your heart. Even after the service is over, you cannot remember what you've heard. It's, it's not a matter of your memory. It's about how you... It's because you have filled your heart with fleshly things. So no matter how 
much you listen to the message, you cannot engrave it on your heart. The matter. If you are interested in the truth, when you hear the truth, you can have the truth. You can make it on your own. But if otherwise, even while you hear it, you may accept, you may say yes with your lips, but you cannot remember them, you cannot engrave them on your heart. So, no matter how inspiring the message is, no matter, you cannot make, the words cannot change your self. It's because you have your heart taken away by the secular contents. That's why you cannot fill yourself with the truth. You have to utilize this. So you have to make the most of your time and concentrate yourself on in the truth. During this year, what about how did you spend your days or time as you reflect on this year, we also had a campaign uh, by which we read the senior pastor's books. Those who have participated in it must be proud of themselves. Also, we had a vowed prayer meeting. Of course, we have to pray always, but in order to receive blessings and answers, we have to focus on the truth. And we have to, we should try to make ourselves a beautiful bride of the Lord. We have to set a goal in it and concentrate ourselves on it. I told you that you should, especially ladies, shouldn't fall in love with the world, focusing on their attention on worldly trends and their looks and trying to adorn and show off to themselves, show off themselves. Worldly people are holy, there are people who are wholly interested in these areas. They are focused on staying fit. They are not concerned about their health, but they are, you know, they post pictures of their bodies and share them with others in order to show off themselves. This is also an act of love. Of, it's good to stay fit, but worldly people show off themselves to others not just about working out. There are many other areas that people are interested in. When, you know, when people see others buying a brand name products, they are envious and they also try to save up to get that. They, they have their interest in it. But those who love God, what about them? They look for, they search for people who are in need. They don't try to, with money, they try to build up rewards. But there are other people who try to take in worldly things with money. We don't have to talk about uh, worldly people's faults, but as children of God, we have to examine how we are spending our time. We have to examine whether we have uh, made the most of our time during this year. But as you reflect on yourself, if you if you spend this time meaninglessly, you have to thoroughly repent of it, and we have to live a different kind of life in the new year. Some are overly interested in cars, so they found out about and study all the cars released like they are a student. Nowadays, we can have access to all, all information about cars, and there are people who share new cars that have been released so that more people can watch them, more people can visit their blogs or YouTube channels. Of course, when you are in a when you are in a situation where you have to buy a new car, I'm not talking about that case. Let's say you already have a car and you don't need to change your car, but you're always interested in new cars. You look for this and that, and you look for 
like as if they are a student studying for exams. You have to look, have your heart on the word, on the truth. You have to repeatedly listen to his word and make the bread of it and apply it in your life. And you have to check whether you have to examine yourselves, apply the word. Only then can the word become life and change in you. But we are living as sons and daughters of God and long for a better dwelling place in heaven. So, what are you having your interest? Where are your interests? You have to examine whether you are spending this days, minutes. Those people who are interested in this is this is also love for the world and greed. To the extent they have it, they cannot fill the heart with the Lord's and the Father's love. Some people have their prayer subject, Father God, please allow me to feel your love. They think other people shed a lot of tears as they feel Father's love, but the, you can find the answer from the Bible. The Bible tells us to not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If you have your interest in the world, if you if you feel the, feel feel your heart with those things, even if even while you praise and read the word, you cannot have. But if you only have the hope for heaven in your heart, if you only focused on how you can recover the lost means your God, if you have your heart filled with such things, such thoughts, even. If you have your heart all filled with the truth only and heaven only, even when you see the same thing, you have different thoughts, different thoughts from those of fleshly people, people who have their hearts filled with the spiritual things can make bread of the word and they can feel the love of the Father and the Lord. Do you feel frustrated in the in your Christian life? Do you want to feel more of Father God's love and the Shepherd's love? Then you have to remember the words in 1 John, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not him. You have to find out what the problem is and fix yourself to guard against the love for the world. Particularly, you need to, we need to cast of greed for money. The Bible says, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money. We shouldn't have our hearts taken away by raising of the wealth and worldly entertainment. Nowadays, housing prices make big news. They rise or fall by tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in a single day. And people get angry or excited with this. As we live in this world, clothing, food, and housing are crucial. It's also necessary we physically live in comfort as well. God wants to bless His children. So, as we live and act in the light, so and ask, God satisfies our needs, giving us financial blessings, good health, etc. But if we ask with greed, God wouldn't answer us, and He tells us not to try to have more and take better things like worldly people do. He says, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. The Bible also says, for we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunges men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. 
Thus, we should cast off greed for money and fill our heart with hope for heaven. Only then can we refrain from pursuing worthless things and lead a truly valuable life that Father God desires. Also, if we prioritize our children over God and only focus on caring for them, making them our idol, we are not on the we are not on the alert and of sober spirit. I'm not just talking about little children. It could be also about your spouse or your parents or your family members. If you are wholly focused on your family members and make them an idol, this is also, you know, an idol. Nor are we making the most of our time while we are entirely concentrated on worldly matters but refuse to give our time for God's kingdom, we are spending our time only for the flesh. Even if we, even if we lead a diligent life to become the head and get wealthy out in the world, it would be no use if we fail to receive salvation. Even if we get barely saved, let's say we end up in the paradise, oh, could we say we have lived a good life? Thus, while we should lead a diligent life in this world, we have to bear in mind that the most important thing is our spirit and that we are being cultivated by God. And when we work for God, if we fail to use our time systematically but waste some of it, it's necessary that we make a more sophisticated and systematic timetable. We should make the most of our God-given time and spend it efficiently so that we can wholly carry out our duties as good stewards in terms of time as well. To live a blessed life, as I told you in the previous session, first uh, to make the most of, I mean, We are being in the end time, the world is being drenched in sins and evil, so we have to have our live with hope for heaven. As we the way we live our life can become our rewards. On the contrary, we can just, uh, I mean, we can also spend time meaninglessly or spend the time wrong way, commit sins, and fill their hearts with evil. But mommy members should become wise ones. So in this world, filled with sins and evil, they shouldn't love the world, but love God first and have their heart with hope for heaven. To live a blessed life without regrets, second, we shouldn't become foolish ones. Today's passage says, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God, will of the Lord is. Then, in terms of the life of faith, who are foolish ones? First, there are those who pray hard but fail to reap fruits due to lack of patience. Uh, we are talking about spiritual stupi stupidity. Some people pray and fast, but then they get angry over trivial matters or do things deviating from the truth, thereby failing to reap fruits. Others diligently worship God and lead a life of faith, but they say negative words or give up in the middle. Still others faithfully work and volunteer, but they expect others to notice and recognize it. If it's not recognized, they soon get tired of working. These are foolish ones. There are people... We say, we hear things like there are people who have, we who get upset after working hard. We also hear about people who have a change of heart. They used to work hard. And people say, why do they, why are they so stupid? And we also have to examine ourselves during the, this time of trial and we have to repent I mean because they volunteer to work to they volunteer to work to show off or boast of themselves they've already received their rewards in this world as Matthew chapter 6 verse 2 says what is what is more foolish than failing to reap fruits even after hard efforts. Even while suffering all kinds of persecution and mockery, Jesus joyfully obeyed until he was nailed to the cross and died with hope for heaven and heavenly rewards.
Like he did, as we joyfully help the needy, volunteer, fast, and pray, we have to do before God who sees what is done in secret. Looking to the heavenly rewards, we have to demonstrate these to the end with a determined, steadfast heart. Second, foolish ones are those who get drunk. The Bible says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. Other than getting drunk, there are many deeds of the flesh, like stealing, the committing of adultery, etc. But why does God specifically tell us that getting drunk is foolish? Alcoholic drinks signify all things we take in pursuit of the world that deviates from the truth. Namely, alcoholic drinks represent the world. Men get dissipated by having alcoholic drinks, and getting drunk by the world is no doubt dissipation. What comes from the world is from the devil. What comes from the devil naturally opposes things from God. So it keeps us from inheriting the heavenly kingdom. Thus, if you are still in pursuit of those things, you cannot but become foolish ones. So you should quickly cast off foolish things which, which you've taken in pursuit of the customs of the world. And from now, some people put a put one foot in the world and the other foot in the church. But we know the truth. You sh we shouldn't double timing God and the church. We are saved by the faith. Faith is... If we tr have true faith, we have to cast off the perishable worldly things. We shouldn't take both things. If we do, we get farther and farther away from the salvation. So we have to stop, uh, refrain from taking in the world. Have you seen anyone around you loving the world even while he professes to believe in the Lord? As you see him, what comes to mind? Are you envious? You should lament for him and discern how foolish he is. And you are, and you have to emanate the aroma of Christ and help him possess true faith. Those people who have left the church, it's good if they lead a good Christian life. We pray that they do. so that they can return at a later time. But those people who have left the church, as we take a look at them, they just compromise with the world. And they say that it's okay to live this kind of Christian life. You shouldn't be tempted by them. You ha we have to set the standard only in the truth. We, are, we have learned that we shouldn't taste even the world, even taste the world or look to the world. We should only concentrate on the word and the truth. We cannot change ourselves over a single night. But if you compromise with the world, we can, while we do so, we cannot advance to the barrel dwelling place in the world. So when we see those people, we have to lament for them and think about how we can help them. But if you, I mean, But seeing those people, if you thought like he looks comfortable with his Christian life, I am envious. Then you've been tempted. I urge you to cast up such worldly thoughts and praise to lead a valuable and blessed life. The third, we need to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. As we accept Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit as a gift, we receive authority as God's children. And by giving birth to Spirit through the Holy Spirit, life is born, so we enter heaven. That's why our Lord says in today's passage, be filled with the Spirit. What's important above all else, I mean, what's important above all is to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Only then can we overcome the world and live a life pleasing to God. This world is under the enemy devil's control. By all means, the enemy tries to tempt the saved ones who believe in the Lord. For us to win victory and not befriend the darkness, we need the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We've experienced this a lot. Those people who receive a lot of grace and, and, I mean, even after we experience a lot and receive the fullness, to indeed change ourselves, 
It requires us to make efforts. We don't change ourselves after receiving God's grace once. Once we receive grace, it's it's just the start of our change. And then we have to receive the, we have to be strengthened by the fullness of the fire of the Holy Spirit through fervent prayer. Only then can we root out our sinful natures. But without prayer, you may say, with determination, with resolve, I can make it. I can take out, I can root out my anger, my irritation. We know that this is never possible. You know, our change, without being strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we cannot change ourselves. We need our efforts as well. And we need a fervent prayer. We need fervent prayer by which we receive the fullness of the Spirit. Only then can we overcome the world and change ourselves. But as we reflect on this year, you have to look back how much you've prayed. Some of you may say, I've prayed fervently, but I mean, even with fervent prayer, have you failed to receive answers and blessings? No. You have to look back on whether you prayed wholeheartedly and received the fullness of the Spirit and maintain that the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You know, nowadays we cannot gather in the sanctuary. You know, this is the this is what is happening around the world. there's no reason for us to complain about that. Even at at our homes, even outside the sanctuary, we have to be able to pray fervently. You shouldn't say, like, I cannot pray well. You have to figure out the reason why you cannot pray fervently. As I told you before, While we, if we, after we take in worldly things and then try to pray, we cannot pray well. If, after you complain about others, if you argue with others, if you get, after you get irritated, after you get interested in all worldly things, after you watch all worldly content, after you watch all those, and then, and then you turn on GCA and try to pray. What happens? One of the church members said on Saturday, they, he visited a good, famous restaurant, and then after when he prayed, his mind was all on that restaurant and how delicious the food was. I'm not talking about you shouldn't have your hobbies. You shouldn't visit a good restaurant. But you have to check how you have put your heart on spiritual things. Then you can figure out why you cannot pray well. Whether you have to, I mean, let's say before 30 minutes before the Daniel prayer meeting starts, you can uh, read a Bible, and then when you read a Bible, at first you may find it difficult to, you may not know, we have, you may have no idea what, what it is, but as you make, but you try, and then the Holy Spirit would rejoice and help you. But if you just live as you please and then try to pray, who would help you? You have to concentrate on the truth and you have to make your efforts. When we used, when we gather in the sanctuary to pray, it took time for us to come to church. Especially women members have to uh, dress up. They should have show such devotion and sincerity. And when they come to church, uh, as we pray in the sanctuary, it was easier for us to concentrate. We were in that environment, but we don't have that environment. Then we have to do it for ourselves, and we have to do it. So in the in the new year, I mean, from today, you have to know the importance of prayer and hold on to the string of prayer and strengthened by the 
The Bible says, Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Even if we attend services, give offerings, and carry out God given duties, unless we stay on alert and pray fervently, we cannot cast off sins and evil and change ourselves. Thus, our faith doesn't grow, and we are quick to stumble in tests. Only by fervent prayer can we keep the words we've heard strengthened by the Holy Spirit, and we can stay thankful even in difficult situations. Even when someone distresses us, we only speak beautiful words and act in the truth. Once we get filled with the Holy Spirit through fervent prayer, we can keep ourselves from being tainted by the evil world and defeat the enemy devil, being victorious always. Whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we can glorify God. I urge you to stay on alert, pray without ceasing, and receive the baptism of fire of the Holy Spirit, thereby leading a life of change and blessings. In the year 2022, do you have a new plans? Most of all, you have to have a goal of praying fervently. In the new year, We will have the v o l prayer meeting at the beginning of the year. We haven't made the announcement, but just keep in mind. So I hope you make a plan of praying fervently. And before you pray, as for me, before, in order to change myself, even outside of prayer time, every moment, I checked every moment of my life. And then I thought, I have to hold on to it in my prayer. So even outside of my, outside of my prayer time, I lived a life of prayer. I try to figure out what shortcomings I had. What, for example, if I complained, I mean, then I, have, I used to think, I have to pray about this complaint in my prayer time. You know, our forefathers of faith was, were in prison and they were in distress. But even so, they gave thanks. But why should I have complaints? This is not faith. I thought in advance what to pray about in my prayer time. Let's say this happened in the lunch time. I... I but I... With such thoughts, I went to Daniel prayer meeting, and that way I could pray for earnestly in the Daniel prayer meeting. To lead a valuable and blessed life, fourth, we have to fear God and our Lord. Solomon, who succeeded David, became the king of Israel, inheriting David's achievements. Trying to follow David's walk of faith, Solomon so sincerely served God. So he ruled the country well with unprecedented wisdom from above. Many nations paid tribute. A queen of a foreign nation visited him to witness his wisdom and achievements and praised him. This way, Solomon led a life where he didn't lack anything. But as Solomon married foreign women and disobeyed God, he wasn't as happy as he was. Uh, He wasn't as happy in his life. So even after enjoying good food, clothing, etc., he wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes that all things vanity. And at the end of Ecclesiastes, he concluded that the most blessed and a truly valuable life is saying, The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep His commandments because this applies to every person. While living a hectic life, hectic life out in the world, we shouldn't prioritize worldly matters, leaving God behind. Some people receive answers and blessings by leading a diligent Christian life, but as they have a change of heart like Solomon, they end up being regretful, losing the financial blessings they receive and health. They also lose good health. But at least at this point, if they thoroughly repent of having loved the world and fear God again, our God of love restores everything. Therefore, we should become truly wise ones and live the most blessed life of fearing God and our Lord. 
As the Bible says, for this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. If we truly love and fear our Lord, we would keep and abide by His word and live a life of obedience. We would strive to follow our Lord's deeds and have this follow our Lord's deeds and have His character and make efforts to recover the lost image of God. By the way, to keep God's commandments, we need to diligently read. hear and understand His Word. So, how important it is to worship God, read the Bible, and pray in our life. If we properly develop such habits in our life, it becomes easy to fear God and our Lord. As the Bible says, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals as your Uh, on your forehead. We should always stay close to the Word of God and meditate on it. On top of that, we always have to examine ourselves, applying the Word in our life. As we act in the pursuit of the truth this way, we live a truly blessed life in which we fear our Lord. And our love, our God loves and delights in such children, blesses them, and answers whatever they ask of Him. Let me conclude the message. Brothers and sisters, time has gone by so fast this year. Worldly people might say, I'm getting old without achieving anything. But we have no reason to lament. God has seen and heard all things we've done by faith during the year and remembers them. The Bible says, Those who sow in tears shall weep without, uh, with joyful shouting. He who goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed, shall indeed come again with a shout of joy, bring his sheaves with him. A tear for prayers you've offered for the Lord, the church, and the shepherd. Your hard efforts not to lose the souls entrusted to you by visiting them and praying for them. Your deeds of helping and caring for the poor and the needy. Your efforts to share the gospel and love, the, love and protect the church and the shepherd through the words of your lips, even when there's no fruit in sight. Your efforts to change yourself with cheerful prayers and fasting. Nothing we've done in our Lord ever falls to the ground, but God pays us back with answers and blessings. You've pray- Have you failed to change yourself even after prayer? Have- I mean, as you look back on yourself, I mean, If you find yourself having changed a lot, you're happy. Especially, especially if after the trial, we find the fruit of our change. Without trial, we may pray vaguely. We may also think like we've changed. We would think we would be able to rejoice even in trials. We would The ways of our fathers of faith were not difficult. We may think that way. Without trials, we may be joyful, happy with answers and blessings. So it feels like we've achieved the word, but in reality, as you go through trials, as you experience hardships beyond your imagination, some things, Things come like a tsunami. You may have financial problems, problems in your life, uh, family. They don't come without a reason. Uh, I mean, but, but Job's case was a special case. That's why God granted it that trial. But anyway, In during trials, we face troubles, but we have to check whether we are joyful, whether we don't have a change of heart during those trials. If you then you, as you find yourself having changed, you are joyful because you got the answer right in an exam. Let's say you've scored 100 points. You know, you're very joyful. It's like it, it's the same when we go through a trial. 
You may think you've done well, but as you look at your results, you find your shortcomings, you were not good enough, you failed to make confession of faith, you've made complaints, you've, lis you've listened to the words of judging and condemning, you've judged, joined them in judging and condemning, and you find yourself not you also need to have such regret because you look at your true self and then you can just change yourself and then but without those processes some may think I'm doing well I'm going to a good battle training place in life uh, in heaven but at, without knowing about their true self they cannot have regret forever so we have, have to be thankful about our times of trial, even if we find our shortcomings. We can look at our true self, so you have to discover your shortcomings and fill your, fix yourself, and then you can become a true with believer. Good grain. You know, our Christian life is a relationship with our personal relationship with God. No one can take our, our faith. This is true faith. Only then can you at least enter the third kingdom of heaven. But if you find yourself with shortcomings, if you find yourself being swayed by your environment, if you find yourself being uh, discouraged in... But you shouldn't stop. But from this point on, you have to discover... You shouldn't just half-heartedly do that. You have to figure out why you haven't prayed well even after you prayed and read a word and worship. You have to check how you hold on to the... That way you can look back on yourself in this year and season and you have to fix yourself and then you can make a new resolution in the new year. I hope you do that. I thank all of you who have pressed on vigorously throughout the year 2021. Hopefully, you ponder how you should walk in the new year and how you could receive more of God's love and bring joy to Him. Stay on the alert all the more and walk as wise men. In doing so, I pray in our Lord's name that you will only glorify God with more answers and blessings. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer. It's time to receive the prayer for the sick. If you are sick, please raise your hands on your sick parts. If you are not sick, lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer with your heart's desire. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our Lord, loving Father, please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches, local sanctuaries, and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints and nerves and tissues and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy, devil, and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them all, all stomachs, lung, liver, breast, uterine and cancer cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, urinary, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all information go away. Heal 
healed them of polio, strokes, arthritis, and hernia resist, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well, let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all ex kinds of accidents to fix their broken bones, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no skull left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated and bring the back dead to back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places and their servants, go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false, and deceitful spirits, and separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bonds of wickedness, darkness, go away, light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer, and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them, and let their families be vandalized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week, and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blessing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I have met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. それは命与える救いの